tropical depression Mandus regenerates and areas of interest continue in the Indian Ocean. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for December 14th. So we have the re-emergence of Mandus in the Arabian Sea looking decent today and some other areas of interest that we're still monitoring, two of them in the Indian Ocean, north and south. We'll watch those in a moment. But so far we've had 91 storms around the world this year, just short of the 92 average, which I'm sure we'll reach. In the Atlantic, it's 169 days until the next hurricane season begins. And I know I'm counting down already, but I'd rather it didn't get here, uh, considering the years that we've had recently. But nothing active here and nothing expected in the next five days, so that's good news. Looking at the Western Pacific, quiet here as well. Nothing going on right now. No areas of interest. Um, nothing in the Eastern Pacific either. Incidentally, uh, we skipped over that area completely. But now let's go to the Indian Ocean, the uh, southern Indian Ocean first of all. This area of interest still active at 80% chance of development. It's been toing and froing in the last 24 hours uh, and some suggest it may have had a circulation and, and even if it did, whether it lasted long enough or not to be considered a system, not sure, but it still is expected to become a TC soon. And in the North Indian Ocean we have Tropical Depression Mandus moving out over the Arabian Sea. And that next area of interest behind it, just emerging off the coast of Indonesia, Sumatra, with a 20% chance of development now as it crosses the Bay of Bengal at low latitude towards Sri Lanka. Satellite imagery across the Atlantic looks like this right now and you can see how it's looking. Um, we've got that massive front moving through the United States which is causing some tornado misery right now across the south. Uh, but further east you can see out over the open waters there's another frontal system there but generally dry, con uh, dry conditions are um, dominant. In the, west, in the eastern Pacific, the western part of the picture, uh, extremely dry conditions in the eastern East Pacific, uh, but that big mass of uh, moisture to the west there looks like it's going to be causing a lot of rainfall along the US west coast, but nothing of a tropical nature. So looking at our systems right now, this is Mandus and it was really impressive looking in the last few hours with its rotation there and certainly has the look of a tropical cyclone. Now admittedly we don't have any direct observations suggesting that it is back to tropical depression status, but its appearance certainly does a decent job. Whether there might be an opening on the eastern side, we don't know because ASCAP missed earlier on today and they'll be doing another pass later on in about three hours time or less, so we'll see what they say then. Uh, looking east we've got this other system, the one that's 20% off the coast of Indonesia uh, already starting to pile up that moisture and convection it's a much larger system and in the southern hemisphere now this other third system that 80% system now uh, convection blowing up here and there uh, but not looking that great on that latest imagery but it's got plenty of time yet to establish itself out there in the open waters of the Indian Ocean wide shot of the western pacific and you can see here there's a little uh, disturbance just about to move through the southern philippine islands but it hasn't been marked and we're really not considering it for anything really and just a few little bits of convection moving over the east coast of luzon as well that might be the remnants of pakar i'm not sure uh, but maybe some of its energy is responsible for a little bit of rainfall occurring over there looks like in uh, isabella over the indian ocean this is what things are looking like from a wide perspective and you can see in general um, there's a lot of uh, storms going on the eastern side of the Indian Ocean including those disturbances. In Australia the northern part of the country getting some serious convection there earlier on uh, and a big uh, front moving through the east coast as well and also another one over there through Fiji and down towards New Zealand uh, and possibly uh, models indicating that there may be a chance of another system uh, forming behind that one that we were tracking for a while uh, that didn't end up forming in the end. We'll see. Eastern and Central Pacific sea surface temperatures continue to degrade around 28 degrees though still in the warmest parts of the Eastern Pacific. In the Atlantic still around 28 as well in the Western Caribbean but really uh, it's 
no real use looking at these sea surface temperatures anymore in these basins because the seasons are done and uh, at this point we're really only be looking at baroclinic type systems uh, which don't really rely on sea surface temperatures as much anyway. In the Indian Ocean we're still looking at decent temperatures here though and where Mandis is right now it's over 28 degrees Celsius waters it will start to decrease and it will weaken and in the southern Indian there uh, perhaps that 98 uh, S, which is a designation, is entering some cooler waters itself as well, which might be hindering it a little bit. And the area off Indonesia looking decent there, 28 degrees, but there is a cool spot off the coast of Sri Lanka. So if any systems do form, or if any, if this one does, then uh, it's not likely to reach India as a fully fledged system. Sea surface temperature anomalies are still above average in parts of the Western Pacific. The La Nina effect is still very much there, and the southeastern, uh, sorry, the South Pacific there, very much above average. Really, the hot point to watch out for coming into this season, I suppose. The Atlantic, some really warm points there as well, but doesn't affect the tropical systems right now. There's another look at the South Pacific and you can see these areas of oceanic heat content. Certainly a lot of energy there in the deep tropics and that will expand a little bit further south uh, fairly soon. Western Pacific still has quite a bit left in the tank. Whether we'll see the systems that it would require, that's a big question mark. I think we'd be lucky at this point to even get one more system in the Western Pacific this year. So let's check the computer model, the GFS, and this is what we have for the next five days. You can see both of these systems, Mandus there, briefly becoming a tropical storm if it does have that circulation, that big caveat there. And it generally moves towards the west, becomes a remnant low and just about almost makes it to Somalia. And in the eastern part there, you can see the development of that next system, that 20% area. But you can see throughout the whole period, it's very disorganized, uh, rather broad, and uh, at times it looks like the may be more than one competing uh, circulation. Here is the other system in the southern Indian Ocean. You can see there the GFS has it developing into a tropical storm for a little bit and then weakening again and sort of losing its circulation for a bit there and it sort of comes back again towards the end of that five day period. Very uh, unusual I suppose um, and uh, it was certainly struggling in those in that five day period well that's caused by wind shear whether it might be lower SSTs not quite sure uh, but you can clearly see what we're expecting there for the next five days in the longer range looking out to the whole Indian Ocean once again you can see the system on the right hand side that's the same one it gets itself going again becomes a significant tropical storm for a while then a second system forms behind it in the central part of the ocean and then look out in the Mozambique channel for a third system there within that 10 day period uh, potentially three tropical cyclones forming in the Indian Ocean there uh, and that third one would be probably most concerning as it does form right on Mozambique's doorstep whether that happens or not, it only forms on day 9, so that's a big question mark on that one, but keep uh, up to date with our latest updates. That's all the serious stuff done. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store, though, whilst you're waiting for the next part, and take a look at our usual items and are still waiting for Hone merch. You can still get it in time for Christmas, hopefully, as long as the post is doing well. And in the silly range, let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, it's the Western Pacific that we're looking at, first of all. For a potential late year system, when does it form? Where does it form? Signs of life there. No, it's... Oh yes, it is there in the end, right off the Philippines. Uh, a very uh, weak system in the end and only just manages to develop into a very weak tropical storm right at the end of that 16 day run December 29th that's an extremely long way off uh, so I wouldn't put any faith in that yet but we know what it's like the late season around the Philippines certainly can't rule out that one more system Checking back in with our trio of storms, the western one making landfall in Mozambique there is a significant tropical storm, and then the other two, the eastern one becoming the strongest of this very long lived system, it is the one we're currently tracking, category 2 probably, and then the other one decides to do a little dance with it and then merges right into it. I'm not sure on that happening, uh, but it is a certainly very busy Christmas period for that region, in fact that Mozambique storm does make landfall on Christmas day morning, so that would be uh, not a great situation to be occurring there but it is still a very long way out could change at the drop of a hat 
And just checking the Australian region for a potential tropical cyclone as well, so actually there may be a chance of having four systems active at the same time, although this one does form a little bit after the Mozambique one dies off. That's around the 27th forming there and a Category 1 on the Sapphire Simpson scale off to the west of Australia. Uh, that is a very typical kind of track at that time of year, so certainly that one is also possible. And that would be our first proper Australian region cyclone if that verifies. That is still a very long way out in the forecast. Not forgetting, it is still early in the season down there, so it is not a surprise that we've not got a huge amount of activity just yet. Well then, back on December 14th, 2015, what a year that was, we had the uh, final piece of the Western Pacific puzzle, Typhoon Milor, which was making a series of Category 4 landfalls in the central northern Philippine Islands on this day. And it was about to move through, it was making landfall on northern Samar and then continued westwards through the islands. Tropical Depression 29 had formed behind it, stayed weak, and Bohale was dying off in the southwestern Indian Ocean. That was also a weak tropical storm throughout its life. So then, here we are right now in 2022, and the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Owen, if we see anything else. In the Eastern Pacific, even less likely, but it's Seymour. And in the Central Pacific, who knows when we'll see it, but sometime soon we will see Hone. In the Western Pacific, we've had Pakar, and the next name now is Sanvu. And in the North Indian Ocean, we are looking out, potentially from this system, the next name is Mocha. 91 storms so far this year, very close to the annual average now, and it is a pretty average season in numbers. The next name in the Australian region, Darien, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Chaniso, and in the South Pacific, it's Harley. We'll be back with another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.